Hello fellow programmer, my name is Jacob and this is a little coding exercise. This right here is a problem from HackerRank, it's called a chessboard game. And in the problem, two players are playing a game on a 15 by 15 chessboard. Basically we have a single coin located at a cell on the board and in each move a player must move the coin from cell XY to one of the following locations, either to X minus 2 y plus 1, x minus 2, y minus 1, x plus 1, y minus 2, or x minus 1, y minus 2. These are basically the, the moves a knight can make on a regular chess game. The players move in alternating turns, and the first player who is unable to make a move loses the game. We are given the initial coordinates of the coin, and we want to determine which player will win the game assuming that both players move optimally. And the test case looks the following way. First we get an integer t, the number of test cases, and then in each line the initial coordinates. And we have to print first or second depending on which player will win the game. This is a classically impartial combinatorial game, so we can solve it by determining the losing and winning states of the game. Let's open up a terminal, make a folder, and open an editor. We read the number of test cases, loop over them read x and y, compute the state, if it is a winning or losing state, we say true is a winning state, so in a winning state the first one will win, in a losing state the second one will win. So now we have to compute the state. We do this by dynamic programming. So we'll here include a map that stores all the memorized values. We check if xy is already computed, then we can simply return it. Otherwise we have to compute it. Initially the state is false, it is a losing state, and here we only have to try it all four moves. Remember, if we can reach a losing state, then the state is a winning state. Now we repeat this three times and change the border conditions a little bit. And the recursive calls. Okay, now we went to all four moves, so we store the value in the dynamic programming method and return the result. 
This should work. So let's compile it. And try out the test cases. Oh, the test case 5.2 yields a wrong result. So there's a mistake somewhere. Oh, this value should be minus two. Try it again. And now this looks correct. Copy the program and submit it. And solved. Now I want to try another thing. This dynamic programming style I used is called top-down. It's basically I use a map to store all the memorized values and link them up when I need them. Another way of performing dynamic programming is to do bottom-up dynamic programming. Basically, I compute all the values for all the states with a loop instead of recursion. To determine the order of the moves, we have to notice that each move relocates the coin nearer to the top left corner. So we can compute the values along the di diagonals, starting with the top left diagonal, then the next one, the next one, and the next one, and so on. So I create a two-dimensional array. Initially, all states are losing states. And, I it, and then I iterate over the diagonals. There were 29 of them. I move along the diagonal then by starting with the most left uh, corner. And then I move up by doing x minus minus y plus plus. So how can we compute the initial coordinates? Well, when I'm on the first half of the diagonals, then the x value of the first of the first piece will just be diag, and after that it will be 14. And for the y value, pretty much the same thing goes. When I'm on the first half of the diagonals, then it is zero. Otherwise, it is diag minus 14. Okay, so I loop over all the cells of the di diagonal. Stop when x is negative or y is bigger than 15. Let's copy all the code from above. Change the recursive call to a, to a lookup in the array. Change the brackets. in the array. Do the same thing with the function call. I change the function call to the array lookup and change the brackets. Then we can remove all the code from above. and compile it and run it. That's interesting. Segment fault is not really what we expected.
provided with debug information. And open up a debugger. Oh, and here's the position. X is 387. That's clearly not supposed to happen. Oh, here it should be X minus minus Y plus plus. Now it should work. Compile it again and check the test cases. Okay, the test case has worked. Let's copy it and submit it. And solved. I hope you enjoyed this little exercise.